Today on an all-new Dr. Phil. I hate coming home to see a beached whale. He feels tricked. After we got married, she's a different person. He says this is bait and switch. Repulsed. You said, when I look at her, I am totally disgusted. And unappreciated. Women want to be around me because I'm good looking, I'm romantic. I don't understand why she doesn't think I'm a catch. You think calling her a beached whale might take the sizzle out of you? Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. I hate to see people suffering, and you've hurt long enough. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Listen, I'm going to get you the help that you need. In five, four. This is going to be a changing day in your life. Do it, Dr. Phil. Are married and remember your anniversary date. Huh? I got my hand up. Your wedding is supposed to be a fairly eventful day. It's full of love, laughter, joyful memories, right? I mean, that's the whole thing. Well, my first guest, Ben, had this to say about his big day. I don't remember the date that we got married because I was so not into it. I was thinking to myself, what the bleep am I doing? <laughs> well, the wedding was just six months ago. And Ben's list of complaints about his new wife, Kelly, is already a mile long. Take a look. When I look at Kelly, I feel disgusted and grossed out. I don't even go anywhere with Kelly because I don't even want anybody to see me with her. I'm embarrassed to be around Kelly because she's gained so much weight. And Kelly's gained about 80 pounds. It grosses me out when I watch Kelly eat. She just kind of shovels the food in and it's all business. It's feeding time. Her thighs are so big, she doesn't have a walk. It's not even a walk, it's a waddle. She has rolls on her. It almost looks like she has boobs in the front and boobs in the back. I hate coming home after a long day to see a beached whale on the couch. When I think about Kelly, I think, man, what have I done here? What have I done to deserve this? Why, why do I have this? I mean, really? 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 Ben says Kelly pulled a bait and switch after he says she trapped him and forced him into marriage. Now, Ben says after the paperwork was signed, Kelly completely changed, and she changed for the worse. Take a look. Before Ben and I were married, he was lots of fun. Kelly was so easygoing and affectionate. After we'd been together six years, I felt it was important to get married because I wanted to set a good example for my son. Kelly told me that if I didn't marry her, she was going to take our son and leave. I did not give Ben an ultimatum about marriage. Our wedding day was absolutely perfect. I was happy. He was happy. I was walking down the aisle when we got married, and I remember thinking to myself, I didn't want to get married. It was a waste to me. Ben and I have been married just about six months. My wife Kelly has pulled a complete bait and switch on me after we've gotten married. Ben's become a different person. He just seems like I can't ever make him happy. She's become a wet mop, no personality. She doesn't laugh, she doesn't talk, she doesn't do anything. I'm completely miserable. Ben makes me feel worthless. Ben feels that I do not provide for him sexually or emotionally. Ben has said he hates me. He may as well just rip my heart out of my chest. Kelly wants to control and tell me how to do everything. It makes me cringe to refer to Kelly as my wife. I feel like Ben has fallen out of love with me. After being married to Kelly for two months, I started talking to other women online. I found a lady online and I met her. I felt like we really connected. She understood me, I understood her. We had a lot of the same interests. I started thinking about my son. My fear was that Kelly was gonna take my son and I was never gonna get to see him again. So I completely cut off this other woman. I never spoke to her again. A few days after that, the woman that I had been talking to online showed up at our house. When I heard the knock on the door, I just thought it was somebody selling Girl Scout cookies. I flipped out and then I closed the door in her face. Kelly freaked out. I was just 
floor, I have lost all trust with Ben. I blame Kelly for all of this. If she'd been a wife and known how to please a man and take care of a man, I wouldn't have had to explore other possibilities. Ben blaming me for cheating is ridiculous. This is all her fault because she's fake. Kelly was one person when we were dating. After we got married, she's a completely different person. I did what any man would do if he was in my situation. Okay, well, I, I want to ask you why you're putting up with this, but I, I'll get to that in a minute. In the meantime, I want to talk to him. Okay. You know, I think everybody does what they do for a purpose. If you say certain things, you say them because you want a certain result. I, I have some of your quotes. You said, when I look at her, I am totally disgusted by her. I think, this is really my wife? That's a statement of yours. Yes. What is your purpose? She's <clears throat> just not the person that, that I married. She's... That wasn't what I asked you. I didn't ask you who she was or wasn't. I said, why did you say that? What was your purpose? What was your desired result when you said that? You said it to us, so right. you want us to know what? You want us to understand what? How I feel. That How you're, I feel about but that she's I'm... just beneath you. She's beneath you. You're better than that, right? You said, this is really my wife? Because you're better than that, right? You should have a, yes. a hotter wife. You should have a, a, a better yes. looking wife, Yes. right? Yes. And you wanted us to know that. Yeah. Okay. You said, she is all business when she eats. I'd probably lose a finger if I put it near her plate when she eats. What was your purpose in, in saying that? Just explain how I feel about it. I'm, about her weight, about, about the weight gain. You, you find her disgusting, right? Sometimes, yes. You said the Olive Garden is her favorite place. I can't go there anymore with her because it's blank disgusting to watch her eat. He, he doesn't think much of, of you, the way you look or behave, but he's pretty proud of the way he turned out. Absolutely, yes, he is. He says, I hate coming home to see a beached whale on the couch eating fast food after a long day of spending my money. <laughs> Charming. It sounds about right, yeah. Yeah. What, um, and I'll, I'll give you some of the statements <clears throat> he said about himself here in just a second, but... What do you think about what he's saying about you? It's just pure hate. Pure hate. That's, there's no other word for it. He says, I think marriage sucks. I would never do it again. If I get divorced, marriage is just horrible. He just felt like we should date for the rest of our lives and raise our son together without any, any marriage, any commitment at all. He says this is bait and switch, that you were one way when y'all were dating that you were fun and that you were energetic and that you liked having sex and all of these things were going on that were positive. But then once the courting phase was over, you said, okay, I got to fish in the boat. I don't have to perform anymore. I can just gain weight, be lazy, be slovenly, put no effort in it, no sex, no nothing. That's what he says you did. Right. What do you say? I disagree. Um, the weight has changed, yes, but it's also been a product of my son and then additional weight gain from that, not losing it from when I had our son. But other than the weight change, I don't feel that I've changed. Uh -huh. You don't think you've changed? No, I don't. How, how could you not when he demeans you in this way? You just get numb to it. You just, you just go through day to day, and you don't realize what your life is. You ju you're just numb. Yeah. What I have to offer other women is, is the whole package. Ben's ego, he acts like he's superior to people. I have all this to offer, but the, the reality of it is my wife, she has nothing. Unless you count laying on the couch. And later... That makes me sick to my stomach. That's disgusting. You're talking about it like he ordered the wrong thing for lunch. I mean, honestly, I want to I want to get up and just knock him out of the chair. Monday on
on an all-new Dr. Phil. He accuses her of sneaking. I do believe she has cheated. Stealing. You said she stole 89000 You have files and files. And lying. I wait for him to not come home at night. That's a lie. But what about him? You've cheated multiple times. You are arrested. I don't want to spend my time on that, okay? I want to figure this out. If not, I'll get off the stage. Don't let the door hit you. You're not going to bully me like you do her. That's Monday. Well, we've heard what he thinks of you. Let's hear what he thinks about himself. Ben says women love him. <laughs> they do. He, he says they, they, they just love him. Take a look. Ben thinks he's extremely special. Women want to be around me because I'm good looking. I take good care of myself. I'm sensitive, caring, and romantic. What I have to offer other women is, is the whole package. If I meet another woman somewhere, I'll flirt with them. I wink at other girls if, I, if I'm talking to them or if I want to get their attention. Ben doesn't flirt with women in front of me, but I know behind my back he's a totally different person. I flirted in front of Kelly once, and, and that was a big mistake, so I... I... <laughs> Ben's ego, he acts like he's superior to people. I have a really high self-worth because of who I am. I have this plate that's full of so many delicious things to give to somebody. And, you know, here I'm stuck with this cardboard chicken laying on the other plate beside of me. Ben thinks he's better than me and the majority of people. I have all this to offer, but the, the reality of it is my wife, she has nothing. Unless you count laying on the couch. Okay, fair statements? Yeah, yeah, they're fair. <laughs> yeah. So how, how do you feel about all this? Because, I mean, you're seeming pretty timid right now, but you were pretty bullish about it when you were talking about it before. I mean, own it. Hell, if that's how you feel, own it. We, you got to be real out here. Tell me what you think. I just, sometimes I, I feel like I deserve better. That's all. I, I work all day. I, I work... Uh, 14, 15, hell, there's been times I've, I've put in uh, 22 hours at work. I've come home and, and I get nothing. She, I don't get a hug, I don't get a kiss. I, I've tried talking to you, you won't talk to me. You, you'd rather just go in the other room. I, I don't get it. So you think you got cheated? In, in a way, yes. I mean, we, we used to be best friends and, and I, I don't know what happened. We're not. We're, we hate each other now. I, I, don't, I don't know what happened. D do you hate her? Sometimes, yes. You said, quote, I feel good about myself. No, I feel great about myself. I'm funny, attractive, and people like me. I have a great job. I'm stable. I take care of myself. So you, yes. you, you think you're doing a pretty good job. Yes, I think I'm doing a good job. I, 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 I take care of her. I take care of our son, our family. I provide for our house. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm doing, I think I'm doing a great job. Yeah. So you think you're hardworking? Yes, of course. Smart? Yes. Attractive? Charming? Yes. <laughs> Do you think you're a mental and emotional cripple? Uh, yes. Yeah, I do sometimes. Because I wonder, if, if you're so smart and charming and charismatic and all of that, why is this relationship in such a ditch? I, d I don't know. I d I've tried to figure that out myself. Well, but it I've, doesn't, I've, I've, it's not consistent with what you're saying because you're such a catch, you would think that she would be highly motivated to make you happy and be with you and all of that. Yes. So how does that compute? Let, let's I, let's figure that one out. I, I, I don't understand why she doesn't uh, why she doesn't think I'm a catch. She doesn't think that I'm anything. She never has. Yeah. In the beginning, she did, and, and we were it was great. And then you think calling her a beach whale might kind of take the sizzle out of her? Yeah. You think it might kind of take the sizzle out of you? And you gained some weight when you had the baby, right? Yes. Yeah. Whose baby did you have, by the way? His. His. 
You, you didn't have the baby. She, she did, yes. She had the But it was your baby. Yes. You used to be a little on the chunky side yourself, didn't you? Yes, yes, I did. Yeah. Did you know her then? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Did you tell him what a no good, slovenly, worthless human beach whale he was? Never. Never. Didn't? No, you did tell me I was overweight. I don't believe you that. You did. You did. You told me several times that you thought I was overweight. Did she tell you that you were so disgusting that she could not watch you shove food in your mouth? No. No, she never said that. Yeah. Do you think you make people better by telling them how horrible they are? No, not at no, all. I mean, seriously, I'm no, just asking not at you. All. I, I just grew up in athletics. I kind of think about things in that way. And, I, you know, I, I never had a coach in the middle of a big game when it's time for me to make a big play to call time out and call me over there and say, just wanted you to know you're a worthless piece of <laughs> Okay? I just I wanted you to know that, McGraw, before you get back in there and run this play, I, I, just, I just wanted you to know that you are worthless. You are like gum on my shoe. You're not worthy of wearing that jersey. You're not worthy of being on that team. Now, get out there. Let, let's, let's, let's see what you do, you slime bucket. Get out there. Exactly what it did, is did, right did, there. Is that, did you, is that the way they coached you? Is that the way they inspired no. you? No, is that the all. way they motivated you? No. What the hell are you thinking? What's the matter with you? Is that how, I, is that how that's, you feel? That's exactly. You think I do? That's how I do? I yeah, you know. come home, you, you complain, whether, it's, whether I cook dinner, whether I didn't cook dinner, whether I cook chicken, whether I cook steak. Regardless, if I'm sitting on the couch, if I'm vacuuming at the moment, I mean, there's always a complaint. <clears throat> well, we have to take a break, and I, I don't know what I'm going to do because I'm not very smart, and I don't have any motivation, and I don't know. I guess we'll just come back and see what happens. I feel like there's a lot more going on with Ben that I don't know about. Kelly has no idea what all I've done. I was living a secret double life. This May on Dr. Phil, it's a month of controversial guests. Are you on medication? Minimal. Because you're slurring your words. She threw a temper tantrum in the hotel room talking to my staff. Am I going to get my word to talk? This is my story. This is just not what I came on this show for. Dr. Phil exclusives. Miranda Barber says she has murdered dozens of people. The suspect's family speaks out. She says she hacked a man to death in the front seat of her car. So what has she said to you about that night? Shocking accusations. No arrests have been made for the deaths of two children. Cody and Julia killed those children. We're innocent. But you have explanations for the deaths. They both had an adverse reaction to their vaccinations. The evidence examined. You have blunt force trauma, fractures of ribs. Now, are you convinced? that it wasn't the reaction to vaccination? No. You can't tell me that my child was abused. Plus, police say her ex starved their five-year-old son. He weighed 29 pounds. And kept him locked beneath the stairs. His face was black and purple. The exclusive stories. What did he tell you about the closet? This May on Dr. Phil. In my eyes, the ideal woman, she can stand on her own, she's independent, she's stable, is a great mother, is loving, and caring. She knows how to please her man. She knows how to take care of him. Take all of that and put it in with the, like, the body of Britney Spears. Not only would that be ideal, but that would just be absolutely perfect. The woman that I just described is 100% completely not Kelly. Okay, so the woman you want is just completely not Kelly. Okay, now, I, I've been talking about the manner in which you've been doing what you're doing. And my insinuation, I, I hope it's fairly clear, is that the way, if you want something different, the way you go about it is not what you're doing. Okay? okay. Now, do you get what I'm saying? Yes, I do. 
Do you believe me? Yes. But you're doing it anyway, and, and, and I'm curious why. My first question, I said, people do things for a reason. What is your reason in being so hypercritical of her? Why are you doing that? I think, uh, I think some of it may be just to hurt her. Well, I want Kelly to listen to what her husband, Ben, has been up to here because he, he says you're not the woman that he wants, right? Right. Let's look at this and then we'll talk. What Kelly doesn't know is that I've been with eight to 15 other women since we've been married. I would meet them online, talk to them, and then meet them for a drink. We would have sex. Maybe I met them two or three other times after that, and then it was done. By seeing all these women, it makes me feel like I've just been wasting the last eight years of my life with Kelly. What's your reaction to that? That makes me sick to my stomach. That's disgusting. An estimate made it eight to 15. That's disgusting. Nobody deserves that. What do you say to him about that? I don't understand how you can come home and do that and look at me and look at your son and look at yourself in the mirror and just, you run around like, like everything's normal and okay and like you, you don't have a conscience. How does it make you feel? You are so beaten down, your self-worth it is so on the floor, you're talking about it like he ordered the wrong thing for lunch. I mean, honestly, I want to I want to get up and just knock him out of the chair, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> how, do, how do you feel about it? I feel ashamed about it. I, I feel... I don't believe that. I do. I think I, you're ashamed I, I, that you're getting focus on right now for it, but I don't think you're ashamed that you're doing it. It's fun and exciting, right? Well, yes, of course. Does it bother you at all that you're hurting her? Hurting her family. Yeah, yeah, it does. You haven't it even is, given our marriage a fair chance. He said eight to 15 women. I, it's only been six months. I yeah. would, I'm curious that he has to kind of do a range. He says he's been with each one multiple times. So we're just talking about six months that you've been yeah, married here. I know. Um, he, he has dating profiles, right? Yes, he does. You, you found those? Yes, And, and did. what did you do when you found them? Uh, I confronted him about it, and he said that it was a jerky thing to do, and he had he lied to me. He told me that he was just kind of getting on there and talking to girls for emotional support. Well, on light dating side number one, Ben claims the following. Marital status, single. Do you have children? No. Dating side two, Ben claims the following. Introduction, looking for some fun, good looking, no strings attached, looking for fun. Marital status, prefer not to say. Looking for women, couples, man and woman. Groups or couples, two women. What was, what was your target there? <laughs> what, were you, what were you looking to do? What were you hoping to get a response to? On that, just looking to meet another woman. The couples thing, I don't that, that's not right. That, that's not right. <laughs> you didn't put that on there? No. I, well, I'm, I'm sure I did, but I probably didn't pay any attention. It just was running through them. I mean, you have to create the profiles just to look at people. So, I mean, I didn't. You just accidentally didn't, didn't put too said. Much into it. You just accidentally checked couples, man, woman groups, or couples? <laughs> two women. You just accidentally checked that? I hate it when that happens. When I'm <laughs> going through. Come on. I mean, it, why, why minimize it now? I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. You, you're, you're saying that was an accident. No, it's not an accident. It was, I was just speeding through it. Speeding through it. Yeah. Yeah. 
And what about that woman who rang the doorbell? The one Kelly thought was selling Girl Scout cookies? Well, it wasn't cookies she was selling. I'm wasting away time with Kelly. There, there's actually women out there that appreciate me for me and are smoking hot. Three weeks ago, Kelly found out Ben was talking to another woman he had met online when she showed up on their doorstep. Now, just last night, when Ben realized he was going to have to come to the show and talk to me, he decided to tell Kelly the whole truth about that particular woman. What Ben told me about the girl that was at the front door was that he had only met her a couple times with friends at a bar, and there was nothing more. What Kelly doesn't know is that the girl that came to the door we were actually dating. We would see each other probably twice a week for six weeks. We would have sex, and it was incredible. She was giving me everything that Kelly wasn't giving me. It felt like somebody cared about me. The truth is, we had a relationship. I had feelings for her, and, and she had feelings for me, too. What I also realized by being with this other woman is, oh my god, there's other women out there that I'm attracted to physically and mentally, and I'm wasting away time with Kelly. There, there's actually women out there that appreciate me for me and are smoking hot. What's your reaction to that? I don't know. I just... I just... It makes me sick. I'm disgusted. I... He keeps making this big ordeal about my weight. And I mean, since our marriage, it's maybe gone up 10 pounds. It's not that big of a change since when we were beginning to date. Yeah, it's changed, but his lack of respect for me, he has a lack of respect for himself, a lack of respect for his son. That's not true. That is true. That is not true. How is that not true? I don't, it, I have complete respect for our son. Do you fight in front of your son? Yes. Uh -huh. Are you turning away from your wife to someone else in this marriage and thereby putting your son's base of operations in jeopardy so you can be with women that you think are hot, that tell you what you want to hear? Are you doing that? Yes. That's how much you respect your son, right? Did I get that right? If I run a red light here, stop me. No, you, you got it. Well, here's what he wants you to do. This is what he wants you to do in order to stay in the marriage. He wants you to drop at least 50 pounds. 100 would be better. He wants you to stop wearing sweatpants, be more concerned with your appearance. He wants you to be more exciting during sex and also do it more frequently. Be more affectionate and caring. Have conversations during meals instead of focusing on eating. Spend more time playing in the yard with Ben and the son. Adopt a more active lifestyle. Take walks, ride bikes with Ben and son. Be financially independent. Be an equal partner. He wants you to be happy to see him when he gets home. I guess from these other women. Make more delicious dinners and cook more frequently. He wants you to help make sure he gets up for work on time and stop bossing him around. Now, you know, the, the truth is that many of the things that you have on the list there would be goals for betterment. They would be legitimate goals for betterment. Yes. Yes. Be a reasonable question. Uh, say, you know, take better care of yourself, have a return to health, you know, take pride in yourself, commit to the marriage, get involved. All of those things are all, you know, that would be le legitimate objectives for the two of you to come to together. I, I don't have a problem with some of those things. What, what do you think? Uh, <clears throat> I think that's right. I, I, a lot of things that I want is just for the betterment of us and, and our son and our house, you know, our, our, our whole family. That, yeah. That's what I want. So you want legitimate things in some regards. Yes. Mm -hmm. But do you acknowledge that you're going about them in a really illegitimate way? Yes. Yes, I do.
And I keep asking you why and you keep not telling me. Do you want out of this? Well, I just want you to love me, Kelly. You haven't loved me in a long, long time. You got women knocking on your door. How do you bounce back from that? I don't think you can. Monday on an all new Dr. Phil. He accuses her of cheating and stealing. You said she stole 89,000. But what about him? You cheated. You arrested him, so you're not going to bully me like you do her. That's Monday. I have a list of things that Kelly needs to change. Kelly needs to be more affectionate, more caring. She's just got to be a better person. Ben needs to take responsibility for the damage he's done in this relationship. Kelly needs to be way more attractive. Kelly needs to lose at least 50 pounds, but 100 pounds would be ideal. What I really need for Ben is to accept me for who I am and not treat me like I'm just a disposable person in his life. We need to have sex more than once a month. We need to have sex like four times a week. I need Ben to support me emotionally. If nothing changes immediately after being on the show, I will file for divorce. Ben feels like he's done nothing wrong. From my point of view, I'm, I'm good. I don't, I don't need to change. It's, it's Kelly that needs to change. Do you want out of this? Sometimes I do, yes. Well, you do or you don't. Do you want out of this? I mean, are you just here because no, no, the son I, I don't. is involved? I don't want out of this. I... If the son wasn't involved, would you be gone? Yes. Yes, I would. So what do you want? When I thought it was just he had possibly slept with the girl that came to our door, I wanted to power through and work things out for our family. Now that I know that there's a, a range of 8 to 15, how do you bounce back from that? I don't think you can. So at this point, I don't see things going forward. If, if you just read his list, you know, uh, some of these things you could each say about the other and you would say, those are reasonable objectives for a marriage. Yes. But then you mix in the fact that you're saying the things that you're saying to her and about her. That constitutes, without question, verbal and mental abuse. Then you add to the fact that you got women knocking on your door that you've had a sexual relationship with and an emotional relationship with, and that's one of over a dozen. That kind of um, throws things into a bit of a quandary, doesn't it? Yes. I just, I just want you to love me, Kelly. You haven't loved me in a long, long time. What happened? What stopped? Cheating. No, before that. Before that. <laughs> it's the constant. It stops. It stops it's, before. No, it's the constant beat downs and, and letting me know that I'm doing everything wrong constantly. Nothing's ever good enough. Do you have any level of insight into your ownership here? No. So you think everything that you've done is in reaction to her shortcomings and therefore justified. That she's driven you to these other women. She's driven that. you to be hypercritical. She's driven you to this level of frustration where anybody would react the way that you're reacting. Is that yeah, how you that's, see that's, it? That's, that's what I said, yeah. Where, where, where do you find these girls, by the way, these 8 to 15 women? Uh, all over. Do they know you're married? No. So you're lying to them? Yes. If you're lying to her and you're lying to them, what makes you think you're not lying to yourself? I don't know. I... Well, our tweet people are um, interested here. Marianne says, wow, you are the hottest man I have ever seen. said nobody watching this.
Uh, Janet Fuller said, I wish this man was half as good looking as he thinks he is. Tina M. Cummings says, she could lose over 100 pounds easily. Just dump him and flush. Um, so obviously the women here don't see this the way you do. Uh, look, I, I'll, I'm going to tell Ben and Kelly what I think needs to happen in this relationship next. I'm going to be very specific. I'm going to put verbs in my sentences, and no one is going to wonder what I think when I'm through. We'll be right back. I feel like Kelly shoots me. Kelly doesn't work. She doesn't help pay the bills. She doesn't clean. It was Ben's idea for me to stay at home with our son, and now he acts like I'm lazy. I would love for Ben to spend a week in my shoes taking care of the house and our son. I think Kelly's just looking for a free ride. Kelly and I argue a lot here recently in front of her son. I try, I try not to, but she has no self-control. Next thing I know, she's yelling and screaming, cuss words at the top of her lung in front of her son. Our son will get in between us, or whoever's yelling the loudest can push him and tell us to stop yelling. Just the other day, our, our son yelled out, Dad, you're a cheater. My heart just it dropped. He probably heard me say it. That's too much responsibility for him at four years old. I wish we could be better parents for the sake of our son. Ben says the only reason that he has stuck around with Kelly is because of their son. He thinks she would say the same thing, but Kelly says she worries that their constant fighting is taking a toll on their four-year-old son. And of course it's taking a toll on the four-year-old son. You get that, right? That's why children have often said they'd rather be from a broken home than live in one because of all of the turmoil and the emotional barren nature of what's going on. And the thing that bothers me most for you is I ask him if he had any insight to his ownership and accountability in this, and he said flat out no. Some of it is my fault, a lot of it is, but I've, I've tried. Kelly, I really have. We've been married six months, <clears throat> and you've slept with eight to 15 people. When, when have you had time to try? I'm looking at you, and, 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 and you're shaking your head like, th th these people just don't get it. They just don't get, they just don't get it. I have tried to talk to her. I mean, they're talking about the things that I've said that, okay, I probably shouldn't have said those things, but aside from that, I've tried to talk to her. I've said, come on, let's do better. Come on, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. And they just don't seem to get that. Dr. Phil's missing that. The audience has missed that. Everybody's missing that. This isn't me, it's her. She won't do anything. If she would just try, it would be better, right? Right? Yeah, that's am what I, I'm, that's, that's am, what am I've I reading been you right? coming off, yeah. Am I reading you right? That's you how are, you feel. You that's how you feel. Okay, yeah, give me her point of view right quick. You are Kelly. Tell me Kelly's point of view. He's beating me down. He, he's, he's a liar, a cheater. He's, ruin, he's ruining, our, ruin our, ruining our family. He's a piece of Go shit. ahead, keep going. He's, <laughs> Come on, give it a voice. Keep going. You're hurt. Keep going. He is. He's hurtful. He's mean. He's spiteful. He doesn't care. He doesn't have any feeling. Go ahead, say it. He's betrayed me and he's betrayed our son. He's betrayed our family. I betrayed everybody. I'm sorry, Kelly. 
So is it time to shut this whole thing down or is there a chance to turn it around? Um, there's a readiness test I want all of you at home to take if you're thinking about it. We'll talk about that. And I'm going to tell these folks what I think when we come back. Want to get something off your chest? Sign up for the DrPhil.com community and weigh in on your favorite episodes and share your personal stories with other community members. Plus, get started on your own blog to share your thoughts on the topics that interest you most. I'll be reading those message boards. Log on to DrPhil.com today. Kelly, um, you have a decision to make here. Yes. I understand that your self-worth is damaged. I mean, if we're going to be honest here, a big part of the problem about why what he says is so hurtful is that you agree with a lot of it. Yes. And so it really hurts to have somebody point that out. Yeah. The first thing that has to happen here is you got to get Kelly back. Yes. You got to get Kelly back. And to do that, you got to take some pride in yourself. you got to decide, you know what, I'm going to stand up because whatever else happens, I'm going to be there for my child. And in order to take care of my child, I have to take care of his mother. Yes. And that needs to start right now, today. Okay? Yes. And I'm going to help you do that. I am going to help you by getting you some professional help individually. I'm going to get you a nutritionist. I'm going to get you an exercise physiologist. I'm going to get you a team that is going to take care of you and get you to have a return to health mentally, emotionally, and physically. Thank you. Okay? That's what you need to do. And whenever you make a decision about what to do with your life and family, make it from a position of strength. Don't make it from a position of weakness. Yeah, I agree. You? <laughs> um, I, I think you screwed the pooch here. <laughs> Your coping has been very immature. Y you have legitimate concerns about your marriage, but you've had illegitimate ways of dealing with them. And your insight is, is real low, which goes along with the immature choices of going mm -hmm. out and sleeping with 15 women. I'm going to offer you some individual help with that. If you want it, will you take the help if I arrange it yes. for you? You yes. need it, I'm telling you. you you're going to be a father. You, you, need, you need that help. Uh, there's a divorce readiness test. I'm going to put it on drphil.com. So I really appreciate you doing that. Uh, also, I want to say thank you to our team at Doctor On Demand. Uh, Doctor On Demand is an app that Jay and I have created that lives on Google Play in the App Store. And it allows you to go face to face with a Doctor On Demand right over your smartphone. And we use it here at the show to talk about and clear medical issues that we have with some of our guests along the way. So uh, I want to thank our team at Doctor On Demand as well. We'll see you next time. Thanks for being here. Today on an all-new Dr. Phil. I hate coming home to see a beached whale. He feels tricked. After we got married, she's a different person. He says this is bait and switch. Repulsed. You said, when I look at her, I am totally disgusted. And unappreciated. Women want to be around me because I'm good looking, I'm romantic. I don't understand why she doesn't think I'm a catch. You think calling her a beached whale might take the sizzle out of you? Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. 
I hate to see people suffering, and you've hurt long enough. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Wilson, take it. We're going to get you the help that you need. In five, four, This is going to be a changing day in your life. Go, Dr. Phil. of you are married and remember your anniversary date? Huh? I got my hand up. Your wedding is supposed to be a fairly eventful day. It's full of love, laughter, joyful memories, right? I mean, that's the whole thing. Well, my first guest, Ben, had this to say about his big day. I don't remember the date that we got married because I was so not into it. I was thinking to myself, what the bleep am I doing? <laughs> well, the wedding was just six months ago. And Ben's list of complaints about his new wife, Kelly, is already a mile long. Take a look. When I look at Kelly, I feel disgusted and grossed out. I don't even go anywhere with Kelly because I don't even want anybody to see me with her. I'm embarrassed to be around Kelly because she's gained so much weight. And Kelly's gained about 80 pounds. It grosses me out when I watch Kelly eat. She just kind of shovels the food in and it's all business. It's feeding time. Her thighs are so big, she doesn't have a walk. It's not even a walk, it's a waddle. She has rolls on her. It almost looks like she has boobs in the front and boobs in the back. I hate coming home after a long day to see a beached whale on the couch. When I think about Kelly, I think, man, what have I done here? What have I done to deserve this? Why, why do I have this? I mean, really? 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 Ben says Kelly pulled a bait and switch after he says she trapped him and forced him into marriage. Now, Ben says after the paperwork was signed, Kelly completely changed, and she changed for the worse. Take a look. Before Ben and I were married, he was lots of fun. Kelly was so easygoing and affectionate. After we'd been together six years, I felt it was important to get married because I wanted to set a good example for my son. Kelly told me that if I didn't marry her, she was going to take our son and leave. I did not give Ben an ultimatum about marriage. Our wedding day was absolutely perfect. I was happy. He was happy. I was walking down the aisle when we got married, and I remember thinking to myself, I didn't want to get married. It was a waste to me. Ben and I have been married just about six months. My wife Kelly has pulled a complete bait and switch on me after we've gotten married. Ben's become a different person. He just seems like I can't ever make him happy. She's become a wet mop, no personality. She doesn't laugh, she doesn't talk, she doesn't do anything. I'm completely miserable. Ben makes me feel worthless. Ben feels that I do not provide for him sexually or emotionally. Ben has said he hates me. He may as well just rip my heart out of my chest. Kelly wants to control and tell me how to do everything. It makes me cringe to refer to Kelly as my wife. I feel like Ben has fallen out of love with me. After being married to Kelly for two months, I started talking to other women online. I found a lady online and I met her. I felt like we really connected. She understood me, I understood her. We had a lot of the same interests. I started thinking about my son. My fear was that Kelly was gonna take my son and I was never gonna get to see him again. So I completely cut off this other woman. I never spoke to her again. A few days after that, the woman that I had been talking to online showed up at our house. When I heard the knock on the door, I just thought it was somebody selling Girl Scout cookies. I flipped out, and then I closed the door in her face. Kelly freaked out. I was just floored. I have lost all trust with Ben. I blame Kelly for all of this. If she'd been a wife and known how to please a man and take care of a man, I wouldn't have had to explore other possibilities. Ben blaming me for cheating is ridiculous. This is all her fault because she's fake. Kelly was one person when we were dating. After we got married, she's a completely different person. I did what any man would do if he was in my situation. Okay, well, I, I want to ask you why you're putting up with this, but I, I'll get to that in a minute. In the meantime, I want to talk to him. Okay. You know, I think everybody does what they do for a purpose. 
you say certain things, you say them because you want a certain result. I, I have some of your quotes. You said, when I look at her, I am totally disgusted by her. I think, this is really my wife? That's a statement of yours. Yes. What is your purpose? She's <clears throat> just not the person that, that I married. She's... That wasn't what I asked you. I didn't ask you who she was or wasn't. I said, why did you say that? What was your purpose? What was your desired result when you said that? You said it to us, so right. you want us to know what? You want us to understand what? How I feel. That you're, feel but that she's I'm... just beneath you. She's beneath you. You're better than that, right? You said, this is really my wife? Because you're better than that, right? You should have a, yeah. a hotter wife. You should have a, a, a better yes. looking wife, yes. right? Yes. And you wanted us to know that. Yeah. Okay. You said, she is all business when she eats. I'd probably lose a finger if I put it near her plate when she eats. What was your purpose in, in saying that? Just explain how I feel about it, I'm, about her weight, about, about the weight gain. You, you find her disgusting, right? Sometimes, yes. You said the Olive Garden is her favorite place. I can't go there anymore with her because it's blank disgusting to watch her eat. He, he doesn't think much of, of you, the way you look or behave, but he's pretty proud of the way he turned out. Absolutely, yes, he is. He says, I hate coming home to see a beached whale on the couch eating fast food after a long day of spending my money. <laughs> Charming. It sounds about right, yeah. Yeah. What, um, and I'll, I'll give you some of the statements <clears throat> he said about himself here in just a second, but what do you think about what he's saying about you? It's just pure hate, pure hate. That's, there's no other word for it. He says, I think marriage sucks. I would never do it again. If I get divorced, marriage is just horrible. He just felt like we should date for the rest of our lives and raise our son together without any, any marriage, any commitment at all. He says this is bait and switch, that you were one way when y'all were dating, that you were fun and that you were energetic and that you liked having sex and all of these things were going on that were positive, but then once the courting phase was over, you said, okay, I got the fish in the boat. I don't have to perform anymore. I can just gain weight, be lazy, be slovenly, put no effort in it, no sex, no nothing. That's what he says you did. Right. What do you say? I disagree. Um, the weight has changed, yes, but it's also been a product of my son and then additional weight gain from that not losing it from when i had our son but other than the weight change i don't feel that i've changed uh -huh. you don't think you've changed no i don't how, how could you not when he demeans you in this way you just get numb to it you just you just go through day to day and you don't realize what your life is you ju you're just numb What I have to offer other women is, is the whole package. Ben's ego, he acts like...